And now in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And now, Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us this morning your gifts, the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'd invite you to be seated. We turn now to our first reading, comes to us from the prologue to the book of Jeremiah. Here we get a sense of how God calls unusual people to ministry, calls us to situations in ministry that we might find a little scary. Here a boy is told that since he was in his mother's womb, he was destined by God to be a prophet, and that freaks him out a little bit. The first reading is from the first chapter of Jeremiah, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. We now respond to that call story of the prophet Jeremiah with the first six verses of Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. Our second reading comes to us, as it has for several weeks now, from the latter portions of St. Paul's first letter to those at Corinth. I would say the second half of the letter really has two climaxes. One is today's chapter, the chapter on love, and then two chapters later, we get a chapter about how the church is nothing without Easter. Oh, that we're Easter people. But let's hear this chapter about love. The second reading is from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues... They will cease, 
As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now I see in the mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. And now if you're able and so desire, I'd invite you to rise and greet the gospel with this one verse hymn, Lord, let my heart be good soil. If you want to find it in your book, it's 512. Otherwise, we'll have the words on the screen for you. Our gospel reading, as it often will during this particular church year, comes to us from the gospel of Luke. This is the part of Luke's gospel where Jesus kind of gives his inaugural address, says what he's come to uh, earth to do. And last week, uh, we heard him say that he'd come to fulfill a particular passage from Isaiah, a passage that talks about uh, a, a servant of God freeing many who are in bondage. And today, we hear about how Jesus' former neighbors and friends in Nazareth respond to this claim of him being the chosen servant of the Lord. The Gospel according to Luke, glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth today, this scripture from Isaiah has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. But they also said, is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless, you'll quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet the prophet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon, one of the major cities of the Philistines. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. As a personal aside, when Julie and I and several others from our synod, our local Lutheran area, were in Israel two years ago, on our first day in Israel, up in Galilee, we visited Cana, and then Nazareth, we've been hearing about those two towns in worship recently, they're very close together, and then we also went to the cliff outside of Nazareth where this incident supposedly uh, took place. It overviews a very beautiful valley in Israel, it's the valley where some think the clash at the end of time will take place. But that's a personal side, just thought I'd share it. What I want to remind you of this morning is that no matter the week, no matter the month, no matter the decade, no matter the century, our task, our mission is always the same. If you were here last week, I emphasized it. Week in and week out, our mission, our task, our goal is to love like Jesus, to put the Holy Spirit's gift of faith active in Christ-like love into play. That's the mission. That's the goal. That's the task every week. It never changes to love like Jesus. Said it last week. I'll say it again today. I have. Collectively and individually, our task, our mission as the church and as Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, each and every week is to put into play 
the more excellent way that St. Paul talks about in today's reading from 1 Corinthians, and we call that more excellent way We call that more excellent way. All right, I'll, I'll take it. We'll, we'll warm up. And so I got to ask you, how did it go this past week? How did it go with your own efforts to love like Christ? Did I, did you, did this church love like Christ this past week? How did it go? If it went well, hopefully we loved as a joyful response to what God has done in Jesus Christ. You might recall if you were here last week that I emphasized that in Jesus, all of God's commandments, all of God's demands, all of God's requirements, all of God's laws have been fulfilled, including the law to love. We no longer love to try to build a resume so we might get into God's good graces. We love in response to Jesus' love for us. So hopefully, if we did love this past week, it was joyfully, a joyful response to what God has done in Christ. And already today, in our reading from Luke, we see that Jesus is not going to be moved off the way of Love. Goes to his hometown, hangs out with the people who've known him longest in life, and what do they do? They reject him, they like him for a time, and then say, no, we don't like you, we're a loser, you're such a loser that we even want to kill you. If you went to your hometown, to your former friends and neighbors, and they did that to you, how would you respond? Would you respond with love? Maybe, but I doubt it. Oh, Jesus, however, does respond with love. He deals with rejection, he deals with a lynch mob at Nazareth, and he does not trade in love for hate or grace for vengeance. He's going to hang tough. And this is all a foreshadowing of what's going to happen on Good Friday. Do you remember the main taunt Jesus people throw at Jesus? Be 
like Jeremiah in our first reading. The call of God descends upon Jeremiah in a way he can't deny. God says, Jerry, love, love, love. And Jeremiah says, what? Did you mistake me for somebody else? I'm not qualified for this task. I need more time. I need more seasoning. Forget about it, God. I want to ride the bench. And what does God say in return to Jeremiah? Nice try, kids. Get the game. I'm going to give you all the words, all the tools you need to succeed. I'm going to give you the timing, the instincts to know when to put those words in the play. All you got to do, all you got to do, is get into the game and trust the game plan. Now, is this easy to do? Trust the game plan? It's not. Jeremiah, it's your control struggles to trust the game plan all the way through the long book bearing his name. Jeremiah is constantly saying to God, send me back to the bench, send me back to the mind of I don't want to be in this game. I don't trust your game plan. Jeremiah, why is he complaining so much throughout the book bearing his name that we have a word in English that owes itself to Jeremiah's personality. It's not a very often used word, but in English we have the word Jeremiah. Do you know what happens when we throw a Jeremiah? We pitch a fit. We have a temper tantrum. We have a woe is me day. We have a pity party. And Jeremiah throws all sorts of
right the citizen. God is the Father, and we are the
God, do we hear about perfect people or imperfect people, generally speaking? Jesus is perfect, but most of the time we hear about imperfect people like Jeremiah. Jeremiah had reservations, doubts, misgivings, was prone to throwing Jeremiah. <coughs> So, here I am, no pain. 
the game plan and love what Christ first loved us. And when we have doubts and misgivings, may we listen to the scriptures and to our siblings in Christ when their message is, I understand it, you got a water break, get back in the game, and trust the game plan. Amen. I would invite the congregation to be seated for just a, a few moments, and I'd invite our kids forward. And we'll share with you a little bit uh, about what we were talking about down the hall already this morning. And I, I will answer the burning question that has been on Macy's mind since she saw the, this bag a few moments ago. I, I stopped at, at Dollar General uh, yesterday to pick up a couple things, and, and as I was carrying this bag, Macy happened to notice this thing pointing out. Um, so if you guys didn't see it already, there is something pointing out of my bag that, that broke through. But I have three things in here, and they're, they're kind of in line with the things that, that we were already talking about today. So, in here, a box of Minnie Mouse Valentine cards, a box of Reese's Peanut Butter Hearts uh, for Valentine's, and it's stuck to the bag already, and then the very last thing, not, not a chocolate flower like we were talking about, but just, you know, uh, a little flower with, I don't know, is that like a teddy bear on, on, on it? It's kind of creepy looking. Um, I'll let you guys look at it. Uh, that, that's what you get for, for 50 cents when you're, you're at the store. Um, a, a weird little bear on, on your flower. But, so all of these things have something in common. Can you guys tell me what? what they have in common, Eli. They, they are all things for, for Valentine's Day, yep, um, which is coming up in, in about two weeks now. Um, and and what, what did we talk about? Part of the, the point of Valentine's Day, part of the point of giving people stuff on Valentine's Day. What, what would you give someone, this flower or a Minnie Mouse Valentine or a Reese's peanut butter cup uh, heart box four. Think about it. You know, Eli told me he has a girlfriend. You know, Macy, Macy told me she has a, a crush on, on an, an older boy. Um, what, why would you want to give one of these to, to, you know, your girlfriend or, or your crush? What, would you do it to, to tell them that you like them or, or that you love them? Yep, Eli's given me a big grin and a, a nod of the head. So, you know, these sorts of things, gifts, are, are ways that, that we tell people we, we love them. Um, whether it, it is a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whether it, it's uh, a husband or wife, whether it's mom or dad, whether it's your, your best friend, we, we give them things like this signs or, or signs of love to tell them that we love them. And, and if you were listening to, to Pastor Scott a few minutes ago, um, he was talking about the guy we were talking about, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, who was given this chore from God to tell people about how much God loved them. And, and I told you that that's your chore from God too. That, that everything you do should be a way... Uh, of showing other people how much God loves them and how much you love them. And the really cool thing that, that I think is important as we're getting ready for Valentine's Day, as you're going to the store and picking out whether you're going to give your friends Minnie Mouse Valentines or Paw Patrol Valentines or uh, maybe just ones that, that are really pretty or that you made yourself, it is every time that, that we show someone love, we're, we're reflecting the love that God showed us. So God up in heaven loves us, and, and we, our job, our chore, 
is to be like a mirror. You know, when something shines at a mirror, it, it shines back a different way. So when, when God loves us, we, we reflect that love to other people. We show that love to other people. And, and when we show love to people, we're showing them God. Um, and, and that's a lot easier than, than the other chores that, that we do. It's a lot easier than picking up after the dog or cleaning your living room or your bedroom. All we have to do is, is keep on, on loving people. So that, that's what I want you guys to, to be thinking about as we get closer and closer to Valentine's Day. Think about the, the fact that your Minnie Mouse Valentine is a way to tell someone that God loves them. So let's bow our heads and fold our hands and say a prayer together. So dear God, thank you for loving us and giving us the chance to show our love to other people through valentines, through gifts, through things like chocolate-colored covered strawberries or uh, through flowers or chocolate or cards or hearts or candy. Thank you for all these ways that, that we can show and share our love. And we ask that you just help us to remind people all over the world uh, and especially the ones that we love, that, that God loves them too. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. I would invite the congregation to rise as we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's only Son, Lord, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Guide your church in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. God of grace, hear our Lord. prayer. Teach us to live in humility on the earth. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in body or spirit, especially those on our parish prayer list and those we name aloud and in our hearts before you now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike, Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for those who have gone before us and now see you face to face. Abide with us in this mortal life until we rest in the arms of your never-ending love. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. A few announcements for you. Uh, thankfully, towards the end of the week and this weekend, our, our uh, sick unit here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church uh, has begun to clear itself up a little bit. Our new church secretary, Terry, was out for about two weeks with the virus. Uh, she came back to work on Thursday, so that was nice. And uh, Pastor Jonathan, uh, Mr. Chocolate Boy, did you notice how much chocolate was on his mind? I guess I'll have to send Becca uh, a text or something. Make certain to get John chocolate for Valentine's Day. But uh, he also had the virus uh, back again today. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, did want to share with you Becky Lilia, often with us here on uh, Sunday, has shared and asked for your prayers about a surgery coming forth in early March. Uh, she has some brain tumors, which we've been told are not cancerous, but uh, do need to be removed. Uh, that's obviously an intimidating thing. Uh, so let's be praying for Becky. Uh, last night, uh, someone came out and said to me, do you know Ed Penrod? I said, yeah, that sounds familiar, but I can't place it for some reason. And then the guy, it was Bill Layton, said, well, I started cardiac rehab with him recently. Oh, Jeff Penrod. Okay, Jeff Penrod. Well, Jeff Penrod is back with us uh, for the first time here in worship along with his lovely wife, uh, Sue, since uh, he had his uh, cardiac procedure back in early December. It's wonderful to see you, too. Let's let him know. We're glad to see them, too. Um, two of our shut-ins, older, long-time members, Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, Dolly and Chiz Palm, suffered through a tragedy this week. They're both 95. They've essentially both been shut-ins since I've been here. Dolly did come for a short time, but uh, Chiz has, has been out of the worship game for a while. Uh, well, you know, good people. Chiz's barbershop uh, for many years down below Big Dogs. Oh, and when you can talk, when you talk to them, you recognize he's a barber. The guy still has the gift of gab. Still has one-liners like no tomorrow. So it's always fun to be around them. But unfortunately, they only had one grandchild. And uh, that grandchild had some kidney issues. And he passed away uh, this past week. So when you're 95 uh, and your only grandchild uh, dies, that's, uh, that's quite a blow. Uh, so be praying for Chiz and Dolly. If you know them, reach out to them in some way or another. Did get in then Friday to spend some time with Gladys Hopped. Uh, she hasn't been with us for months because she had a fall and did a number to her leg uh, this summer, but she usually sits right here in the front row uh, with her sister Audrey and her friend Dee. Did get in to see her in her home on Friday. Uh, she was of positive disposition uh, as always, but uh, she's under real, real house restriction. Uh, can't really leave the house uh, due to the issues that she's having. So be praying for her as well. And then uh, uh, I, I often describe the biggest kid in the congregation. Have you learned by now who I think the biggest kid in the congregation is? What's his name? Ray Levernight. Well, uh, he is the biggest kid in the congregation, but he's also a pretty good guy. And for six years, he's been our council secretary. And guess what? He had his last council meeting for a time uh, this past Tuesday. So let's let Ray know we appreciate uh, his, his service. There are still poinsettias out in the narthex. Take them, take them, take them. Uh, if you didn't buy one, no biggie. Take them, take them, take them. Get them out of here and uh, in your home. And if you're like my wife, Julia, you can make those babies uh, live for years at a time. And, and uh, summer, winter, fall, whole nine yards. They do stay al alive if you take care of them. Uh, your annual report and giving statement, if you haven't picked it up, are available out in the narthex. If you are a voting member, somebody who's communed and made a contribution record in the past uh, year. Uh, so please pick one of those up. 
and uh, then give strong consideration to coming out for the annual meeting next Saturday, the 5th, after worship. Uh, you know, uh, probably seems like one of those things uh, that you can not keep on your calendar, but uh, important things happen at annual meetings, and the reality is that uh, the threshold for entrance at an annual meeting is pretty low. Oh, so what can happen at an annual meeting is that uh, somebody appears out of the woodwork and uh, the meeting takes up topics that uh, are probably better not taken up. I remember one particular annual meeting where we talked for hours and hours and hours about whether or not we should remove a church pew. That sounded like a good and faithful way to use people's time. Not. But the reason it happened was because the involved uh, had taken a pass on the annual meeting. Oh, so it's important uh, that you come. So hopefully as many of you as possible will come next Saturday after worship. Just worship next Saturday and stay afterwards for the meeting. Tuesday, we have our property meeting this week at 6.30. I think one of the things that committee is trying to do is reduce unnecessary service charges. Uh, look for volunteers in the congregation to fix things that they can fix so we don't have to pay the $50 service call, the $100 hour rate, oh, to put a new uh, handle on a toilet, uh, which was one thing that happened uh, this past year. Uh, so uh, if you have those sorts of skills, let me know. I'll put you in contact with the right person. Wednesday, our visitation team will meet at 6.30. Uh, if you don't know, we already have a number of lay people who assist me in taking care of our many shut-ins. Uh, congregation of this size, we do have a lot of shut-ins. Aging community like Johnstown, uh, we do have a lot of shut-ins. And uh, oftentimes, uh, the demands of the pastoral office are such that it's hard uh, to find uh, the time to visit those folks with the regularity they deserve. So, lay people graciously step up help me out. Uh, we assign a person or two for them to visit, uh, and then we go from there. So if you think you have an interest in that sort of ministry, come, uh, come Wednesday night at 6.30. And then finally, our evangelism team will meet this, uh, this uh, Thursday at 6.30. I've said it before, but uh, I think that committee has the most important work for our church at this time. We were flying on cloud nine prior to the pandemic, uh, good, 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 good things were happening. Good, good things have happened these past two years. But these past two years have been a grind. Oh, there's no way around that. And so if we're going to continue the good and positive things here at Mount Calvary, we got to make certain that people know we're here and that we're good and doing good things and that they're welcome and that there will be uh, uh, useful things for them to experience and do here as well. So if you'd like to help us in that effort, come out on Thursday at 6.30, or do this one thing this week. If you use the Internet, if you use the Internet, and I think most of you use the Internet by this point, you can look up our congregation on Google. Just type in Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. It'll come up, and you'll see that there's a rating underneath our congregation's name. It says, I think uh, 21 people have rated Mount Calvary, and they rate it as a 4.7 or a 4.8 out of 5. Guess what? You can do one of those reviews very easily. Of course, you don't want to reference the long-winded pastor or uh, the pastor who needs to trim his beard a little more often. Uh, you want to leave that stuff out, uh, but you go on there, you make a review, and guess what? Each and every time an additional review is made, when people type in church in our region, which church starts to flow up towards the top of the list? Our own. Think you can do that? It's a simple, easy thing. Google review. That's it for my announcements. Do you have anything to add or share yourselves this morning? I guess I do have one further announcement. There is an Afghan, or, yeah, I guess Afghan, I can still use that word. We still call that every once in a while. A uh, blanket out there that one of our members uh, made out of cloth that people had donated to the church were uh, donating uh, that, that uh, cloth off. Uh, if you want to make a donation of 50, cent, of 50 cents, you get a little ticket. All the proceeds uh, from the donations will go to help uh, the uh, 
Helping Hands mission out in Portage, and uh, the, the ticket that's drawn, you, you get, the, get the nice little uh, blanky Afghan, whatever you want to call it, made by our own Anita Broad.